Welcome everybody. Please, as you are joining us, share this video, give it a like, share it, give it a like. Ah, oh, sad news. I lost my pregnancy this month. Can it happen to can it happen to conceive again? Of course, my sister, I'm so so sorry. That's why I tell you people, you know, our people are wise. Once you become pregnant, most of them that are pregnant in this group, once they become pregnant, they will run away. They wouldn't come back again. It's not all about getting pregnant. At least for three, for first three months, if you are pregnant, you need somebody to watch you, to tell you the things you are going to do to avoid miscarriage for first three months. If I'm pregnant, I don't tell people I'm pregnant until after three months because that is when you can be proud to say you are pregnant. That is when your pregnancy will hold. So for some people, when they become pregnant, you will not see them here again. The wise ones, once they become pregnant, they ask me a question in the comment section and I ask them what to do. Once you become pregnant, there is some certain food you don't need to do. Eat. There are some certain things. Well, after this program, I'm going to talk about that. This is our prayer. But if you lost your pregnancy, don't give hope. It means you are fertile. You are going to conceive again. If you are in this group, you become pregnant, try to ask me a question. There was a woman who nearly got miscarriage. She asked me a question, and I told her what to do. And she did it. And today, she's still carrying her pregnancy. It's not all about when you get pregnant, you run away. You say you have gotten what you want. You don't need the tochi again. Even if you don't want tochi, once you become pregnant, visit your gynecologist. They will tell you things you need to do, things you need to avoid within the first three months because that is a delicate period. During this period, the baby is still in form of uh, blood. Anything can flush it, so you need to be careful. My sister... I am so sorry about your loss. We are going to pray for you. You are asking if it can work again. God, who gave you the first one? Is he not, is he not still the same God? God doesn't change. God, God is not you and I that can change. I can say something now. Maybe you offend me in the next minute. I will say I will not do it again. God is not a man. So do not, for you to come here and say, can it happen again? It shows that you are a woman of little faith. You were pregnant before you miss it. Hope, believe, have faith that you are going to conceive again, okay? I, I sympathize with you. I know, I know how you feel when you have been trying to conceive and you conceive the pregnancy is no longer there. But trust me, after this program, depending on when you have the miscarriage because your womb needs to be healed before you conceive again. But I promise you, you are going to get pregnant again. So, I don't know if we have people that are here that didn't join us yesterday. We are doing a new system this time around. When you come here, in case you weren't here yesterday, as, long, as soon as you come, if you are not been commenting in the comment section, you must. You must. You want to do yourself a favor. You are not doing me. Comment so that somebody can choose you. We we'll change the strategy this month. We are choosing partners. Look in the comment section. Choose If you didn't choose somebody yesterday, choose somebody, your prayer partner. In this system, what, how we do it, this is an agreement prayer. I like explaining it all the time. Agreement prayer is a situation whereby a group of people who have faith, who believe in God, come together 
in one accord with clear mind. And the, the, the stronghold of this prayer is this. You must have faith. You must have faith. If at the end of this program, you, you are not pregnant, you know that you, 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 you didn't have faith. And it must not happen at the same time. Some people will get pregnant the, the ending of this, uh, this month. Some people will get pregnant next month, being December. Some, it may occur in January. But trust me, you will get pregnant. Don't ask me how it will happen. Go and ask God. So you choose your partner. Look at the comment section. If you are here, you are not commenting. You are not doing yourself a uh, favor. You, you are depriving yourself. Choose somebody. For example, you can, yesterday I used blessing as an example. You can choose Martin. Then when you choose Martins, you write Martin, Martin, I choose you as Martin Pussy. Martin Pussy. I choose you as my partner. Then Martin will accept it. So what you need to do is this. After this prayer, this is the ending. What I mean by the ending is not that the prayer is ending today. We are going to end it on Friday, but we are closing. Remember, we'll start the program 6 to 3, fasting, 6 to 3 p.m. And I said before, if you are in a medication, there are some people who are under medication that they need to take daily, either hormone or any health medication, you must continue your medication. Don't leave your medication and fat. God knows your mind, your heart. What you should do is this. You limit the food you eat. If you have ulcers, if you are suffering from ulcer, please don't go hungry. Eat, but limit your food. But if you are healthy and um, you don't have problem, don't go and reserve your morning food and say, uh, after the prayer, I'll eat my morning and afternoon food. That one, you are deceiving yourself. No, you need to dedicate. You need to set. You see my face? I didn't even wear earring. I didn't rub anything. You deprive this skin. You suffer this flesh for you to get what you want. Do not baby dance. Do not fornicate. Do not baby dance. Do not uh, have sex within this period. Deny yourself. One day I will bring out time. To teach you people what fasting means, how you should fast. It's not all about um, disguising yourself, making yourself uh, look dirty, walking along the street so that people will know that you are fasting like hypocrites. No, there are some things you need to deny this flesh. So, the partner you choose now, you will be praying with this partner. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for the person you choose. The person you choose will be praying for you. For example, now myself, if I say I choose joy now, at night, at midnight, please, 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 endeavor to pray at midnight. Start 11.30, sing praises, 12 o'clock, pray to God. Cry to God. If you know how you cry to doctors and all these unnecessary human beings, cry to God. Then when you wake up, you study your Bible, the chapters we have here. We, yesterday, we read the story of uh, Elizabeth. We, study, we have studied the story of Hannah. We have studied the, the, the story of Rachel. We, we have studied the uh, story of um, Elizabeth. These people, they waited upon the Lord. Her, um, Sarah gave birth at the age of 99, but I pray that none of us should reach that age. That is just to show you the word of God. That is how to show you that God does the thing. Um, the, God did not literally, um, uh, uh, he did not literally make Sarah or Elizabeth or Richard to stay up to that moment. He just wants to use it to teach us example, to tell us that no matter how difficult you are, no matter how difficult situation, no matter how how uh, difficult situation you might find yourself, if you believe that God can heal you, he will do it. He created us, right? He knows every of our problems. Just to call upon him like what we are doing now. So if I am to conduct that prayer now with anybody now, I will say at, in the evening before I go to sleep, I pray with the name of the person. Make sure you write the name of the person down. 
you pray with the name of the person you say god please um <clears throat> and who is this blessing have been waiting upon you for for how many years please bless her bless blessing wipe away tears in her eyes so that her enemies cannot uh, rejoice over her then uh, you pray pray don't mention yourself don't pray for yourself why blessing or any other person that have chosen will out there be pray don't even mention your own don't bring your own case let the person who choose you be praying for you and let's see how this will work and i believe when you leave your body for another person body god answers it um very fast so if you are here if it is your first time you don't have partner please 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 make sure you choose somebody if, if people are not enough you can choose more than one person so that let's do this thing together um somebody wrote to me yesterday again i'm not going to disclose her name but her marriage is about to scratch because of her inability to conceive i told her about this prayer she said she never knew then i asked her to join us i believe she's here but i'm telling you today if you are that person that nothing will happen to your marriage in fact after this uh, prayer you are going to carry your baby that enemy that wants to chase you out of your husband's house will be put to shame because that is what god tells us in the book of isaiah 41 from verse 10 he said that our enemies will know the shame of defeat anybody who is using infertility to destroy your marriage god will not allow it to work in many social media platforms that i have been seeing people always tell you what you should do drink this do that you will become pregnant but they have not tell you that you should approach the giver of children which is god and that is what we are here to do and uh, somebody may ask how is god going to make it possible i have been i've been trying for years they say my tubes are blocked they say i can't get pregnant again i am getting to menopause well that is the question you're asking yourself and when god wants to do something he breaks every protocol god doesn't listen to or take permission from anybody god does things at his own time and also i want you that is watching me to have faith believe faith okay let's study the book of hebrews let's study the book of hebrews chapter 11 so that um if you don't have faith i think you are wasting your time here if you don't believe that like that my sister who has miscarriage is asking uh, is it possible for me to be pregnant again she doesn't have faith if you don't have faith there is no point you being here it's just like a waste of time for you to ask god for something you must have faith remember he said if your faith is as little you see how little and small the mustard seed is god is telling you if you can have little faith just like that mustard seed that you can move mountain and when, if you have faith before whenever you start doubting the faith then you just spoil everything you see i use the example of uh, peter when peter was walking on the sea with jesus christ in the sea or on, on the sea yeah so initially he had faith he believed that he can do it that jesus can save him he was walking but all of a sudden that human nature that human nature comes to him telling him oh, peter do you realize that you are in the water do you know that you can sink you don't know how to sink you are you are in the ocean then peter started uh, having fears and immediately he started sinking so if you are joining us in this prayer and at, at a point you start thinking i keep on repeating it some people month will not end they will just go and be calculating their um, when did i see my don't go and check when you saw your period last it's not your business when did i saw my period on the 28 uh, which means or maybe when they have little crap they will be thinking it's their period i know it's very difficult 
to remove your mind but you can do it whenever i pray i want to ask god for something once i pray i forget about it and i always hold god by his words i hold god by his word i always say god if if truly you are my god come and vindicate yourself come and take come and show yourself come and show yourself show me that you are my god and you will see he will do it now let's look at hebrews please if we have somebody that can write for us we can write it hebrews 11 we'll have we'll start from chapter one you need to know what faith is all about it says to have faith is to be to have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for to be certain of the things we cannot see it was by their faith that people of ancient time won god's approval it is by faith that we understand that the universe was created by God's words, so that what can be seen was made out of what cannot be seen. It was faith that made Abel offer to God a better sacrifice than Cain's. Through his faith, he won God's approval. God always loves it when you ask and you believe. If you want to study more about faith, please study the book of Hebrews. 11 starts from verse 1 finish it so that you understand how faith work was it not um, uh, true faith that um, abraham we are able to conceive abraham and his wife sarah it was through that same faith that they conceive when somebody promised sometimes we will have faith we will trust human beings more than god sometimes somebody may promise you money these are your fellow human beings that you know that they can change at any given time. They will say, I will give you that. You put all your hope, all your faith there. At the end of the day, the person would uh, disappoint you. But only to trust God, you cannot. So I want us to study another thing to show you that God is the God of impossibility. I think I read this chapter the other time we we had this prayer ezekiel please if you are there you write it the book of ezekiel 37 we are god commanded the right the dry bone imagine a bone that have dried a dried bone god commanded them to life let alone uh, infertility that is nothing to god that god can just blow breeze like this the blind man bethmeyer was on the way he was sitting there. He, he heard that Jesus was passing. He was shouting, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, just like you would be shouting like this. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, have mercy upon me. People were uh, trying to stop him, telling him he's making noise. Close your mouth, close your mouth. He, he didn't. He said, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon me. Jesus Christ, have, because he knows that the person he is calling would deliver him. Because he believed he, what God is looking in this prayer. I'm taking time. Some people will say I'm talking too much. But this is the foundation of this prayer. What God is looking for is your heart, your genuity, your sincerity, your heart. Do you really know? Do you really trust? Do you really believe that God can? When I tell you people now, yeah, go and, go, go, go and take this medication now. You become pregnant. You go and do it. But why not call upon the person that can give you this medication, this pregnancy without any, 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 any problems? Please, if you are joining us, share this program. Follow our page. Like it. This page is dedicated to women who are trying to conceive here we don't charge money i don't ask you to pay anything just come and learn if this is what i will leave for humanity let it be but do me a favor share a lot of people need this information you don't know many people that this page have saved their marriages have saved from depression have saved from committing suicide yes People call me at midnight, they say, Mommy, I want to die, I want to kill myself. This, I said, only the encouragement. They are able to live today. So when you are sharing this page, 
I don't know, some people want something, and sometimes when you ask them to share, they think that if they share it, I don't know, maybe Facebook will give you one million. I don't know how you people think, but the essence of sharing it is for people to get hold of this information to solve their problems, to save their life, to save their marriages. A lot of women are passing a lot. Women are passing a lot when it comes to infertility. So if you are here, like the page, share it. If you think what I'm doing here is what you need, you follow. If, if you think it's not what you need, don't follow. If you think it's for you, you follow it, turn your notification bell. I upload video, I am dedicated to this page. So what am I trying to say? I am giving you how God, all those pregnancy tests I used to post, when, once they send it to me, it came with write-ups. Sometimes I don't publicize all the write-ups. Some of them say, mommy, like you said, they call me mommy. Yes, I'm mommy. They said, um, I, I joined in that prayer. Like you explained, I had faith. I never doubted. And here is the result. People who did not join the prayer, they will say, mommy, I watched all your videos I did exactly, I don't know why people are not doing what you are saying. I did exactly, this is my nine years of trying to conceive. I did exactly what you say. Just one month, I am not pregnant. Would you not believe me that God answers prayer? I discovered that anytime we, we make this agreement prayer, a lot of people are getting pregnant. And those people that are conceiving are those that have faith in God. You must have faith before your prayer can be answered. The first thing, you must know God. You must know, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. You must not be in enmity with your, anybody. Your heart, your heart must be free. You remember a woman that a man that brought a huge offering to church to offer God. God told him, Go and reconcile with your brother before you come in. Your conscience, whenever you are in a enmity with anybody, it hinders your prayers. You should free your mind. If you know you are keeping grudges against anybody, forgive the person, let it go, let it go. You have to be sorry for your sins. When we are growing, we committed a lot of abominable things. But God, one thing I like about God, he doesn't judge us according to our sins. Because believe me, if God starts judging every woman how we lived during our past, no woman will be pregnant. Because sometimes when we have it, we think we are not ready, we we'll got to remove it. And when we not think we're ready, we will be looking for it. But God is not like that. All you need to do is to ask him for forgiveness. He will forgive. He's a merciful God. Then comes faith. Another thing that fascinates prayers, another thing that fascinates answering of prayers is sowing a seed. It's not a must, but it helps. It's not a must, but it helps. Sowing a seed. How do you sow a seed? If you have a neighbor, like the star, the reason why I put this star here, I know a lot of people from Nigeria. I, I, I'm not supposed to be uh, saying everything here, but I need to clear this. A lot of people in Nigeria who wants to conceive, they don't have money to buy prenatal vitamins. So from the star, any star you send here, I use the money, I give it to them to buy medication for themselves. So when you send star, you are sowing a seed. When you help your neighbor who have not eaten, your neighbor, you go to motherless baby home, you buy something, you deposit, you, you go to your church, you can meet your pastor or your reverend father, you can donate money to him, tell him that he should use this money to, to care for the poor. These things helps. Giving, giving is the source of prosperity. 
it hinders where it's it blocks it blocks the um, evil attack from the enemies from you you might not know this sometimes they will tell you so seed is not all about going to church they will tell you if you want to do this it's not i said it's not a must but it facilitates it helps it helps these are the strategies the tricks of the things you do that can help your prayer but not a must the sowing of seed is not a must you should do it at your own free will now let's look at the example of god for people who have not tested god i have tested god blessings i know god exists i believe in him anytime i call upon him he answers me and god knows when i am serious god knows when you are serious if i want to pray to god and i really serious i need that thing god knows I may be praying orally, he will just be looking at me. But when I mean it, he knows that I mean it and he will give it to me. So the same God that created me is the same God that created you. No matter that many people choose to serve other God, but believe me, we have only one true God. So now let's look at another thing that will show you that God is the God of impossibility, that he breaks every yoke. God is not a man that will come to a locked door. He will be looking for a key. He doesn't need any key. He will just walk there, go and do what he wants to do. If God wants to bless you with a pregnancy, and if you want twins, in the book of Jeremiah 7 verse 7, he said you should ask. If you want twins, ask God. Tell your partner that you want twins. Let the person be praying for you for twins. Any number of children you want, Tell your partner to be anything you want from God, ask God. So now let's go to Ezekiel. I want somebody to write it down. Ezekiel chapter 37. We are going to read from verse 1. Now, this is another thing that justifies that God is the God of impossibility. There is nothing God cannot do. Now, this is God speaking to Ezekiel. And Ezekiel was the one that is telling this story, his encounter with God. Just like many of us, maybe this will be the first time you will encounter God. After this prayer, you wouldn't know when you will become pregnant. Some people are here. Ah, let me try. Oh, let me try. At the means of trying, God will surprise you. So, Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1. Now Ezekiel said, I felt the powerful presence of the Lord, and his spirit took me and set me down in a valley where the ground was covered with bones. He looked, he looked, he led me all around the valley, and I could see that there were very many bones and that they were very dry. He said to me, Mother man, can this bone come back to life? Just like that, our sister that lost her pregnancy said, can I conceive again? Just like many of you, <laughs> I'm just laughing because uh, people do not know the power, the power of God. People do not know. They don't know. <laughs> people do not know that God exists. People have not tested God. Just as like many of you here listening to me will say, how can I get pregnant? They say, my tubes are blocked. How can I get pregnant? They say, I have PCOS. How can I get pregnant? They said, I've entered monopause. How can I get pregnant? They say, I have endometriosis. How can I get pregnant? They say, I have hypoprolactin. How can I get pregnant? They, was, they say, I have um, estrogen dominant. How can I get pregnant? They say, I have thyroid problem. How can I get pregnant? They said I have uh, ovarian, ovarian failure. How can I get pregnant? They will say I don't have insufficient head. My sister, keep quiet. Keep quiet. The giver, the owner of children is telling you that he will do it. All these things belong to him. All these things, sometimes all these things happen to bring your attention back to God. Stop asking yourself questions. Don't ask yourself this question. If you have been told that you are suffering anything, hormonal imbalances, 
those things are nothing. Once God wants to bless you, all those things will vacate. They will just disappear. So God took Ezekiel to a place where I know everybody watching me knows what a dry bone is. A dry bone is useless. It's something that you cannot use to do anything reasonable again. A, a dry bone should be thrown inside a bush. So when God took Ezekiel to this place, he asked Ezekiel, Motama, just like I will ask you now, peaceful as a, can you be pregnant? Can you can you be pregnant again? This is what God asked Ezekiel. You know, I don't blame Ezekiel for his response. Wow, my Sarah, see, see um, Sarah, you are not working today. I was feeling for you. I said, Sarah, I missed this uh, prayer. Sarah, you are welcome. No work today. Thank God. It's God that brought you here. This month will be your month. God brought you to this program. Sarah, how are you? So, um, if I were Ezekiel, I would still answer the same. The same. Okay, you are welcome. If I were Ezekiel, I would still answer the same way Ezekiel answered. Because how can you take me to a place where there is bone? It's just like you bring a dead human being, somebody that has dead, and you know, according to human humans, we are once somebody is dead, the person is dead, right? So you bring me to a dead human being and you're asking me, can this person wake up again? What do you expect me to say? So uh, now God took Ezekiel to a place where, where, where he's filled up, filled up with a dry bone. And um, is, uh, God is not asking Ezekiel, can this, uh, can this uh, dry bone come back to life? Ezekiel was shocked. Ezekiel replied, Sovereign Lord, only you can answer that question. Ezekiel said to God, God, only you can answer that question. Because to me, these bones are dried. These bones are useless. These bones are worthless. These bones cannot be used for anything. Just like some of us have believed. Somebody, so, somebody wrote me, she said she have given up. I said, why would you give up? He said, doctor said, she will not be pregnant again. I asked her, have you met the doctor, the, the highest doctor? She's asking me, who is that? I said, God. So now, God said to Ezekiel, God is telling you now, you that is listening to me, you are Ezekiel in this, in this uh, prayer now. God said, anybody that choose, um, anybody that choose um, Sarah, you choose a prayer warrior. Um, Sarah, maybe, I think this is the first time you are joining us in this prayer. Sarah, we change a strategy this month. So what we are doing is, uh, will you choose partner? You choose partner, your prayer partner. When you choose your partner, you will be praying for that person you choose. The person will not, you will not be praying for yourself. Let me use myself as an example. Sarah, if I choose you now as my prayer partner, I will be praying for you. I will not be praying for myself. I will be praying for you. And you, you'll be praying for me. You must know my name, the complete name. You must be mentioning my name. For example, if I want to pray with you now, I say, Sarah Omo Berila. I don't know, so forgive me. God Almighty, I commit Sarah into your able hand. In this is an agreement prayer. We agreed, we joined faith together. According to your word, you said that whenever one person is sick, we should meet together with the church elders and pray over it. We we'll pray. I pray for Sarah that this month, your blessing, which is the gift of a uh, fruit of womb, should locate her. Do not pray for yourself. Do not mention your name. Rather, be praying for that person that you have chosen. Write down the name of the person and in the night before you go to bed, you pray for the person at midnight, 12 o'clock, you pray. So this is how we are doing it um, this month. I will continue until the prayer will end on Friday. And if you want to benefit from here, you must be participating live until Friday. We'll end it. Then we we'll wait for the testimony. And if you know that you'll be the first person to testify, you begin now to pray 
as you are praying, say, let Sarah be the first person to testify. Let blessing be the first person to testify. Let peace as a, be the first person. Let many of you, anybody that wants to be the first. Now, now after God tell, asked, Sarah, I hope you understand now. After, um, after um, God asked Ezekiel if these dry bones can rise up again, then Ezekiel replied, Lord, only you can say that. Mm -hmm. Now God is telling you, you are the Ezekiel here now. God said, Sarah, blessing, diamond, divine, he said, prophesy to the bones. Now I want everybody to pray, place, place your hand, place your hands. Oh, sorry for my English. Here we speak German and English, and the German is taking my English, so I'm trying as much as I can. If I leave this place now, I switch to German language. So forgive my English, it might not be sound, but then mm -hmm, you understand. So place your hands in your womb and speak and prophesy, just like God is telling you. He said, Prophesy to the bones, prophesy to your womb, prophesy to your womb, place your hands in your womb and prophesy to your womb because your womb now represents the dry bone. When something is unable to produce something, it's, it's, it's regarded as dry. So, Place your hands in your womb and tell your womb, which is which represent the dry bone, to listen to the word of God. And you should always include this um, chapter in your readings. Ezekiel chapter thirty-seven. Read from uh, one to the end. Now place your hands in your womb and. Which is which represent um which represent the dry bone and prophesy to this womb. Tell this womb to listen to the word of the Lord. Tell them, tell your womb that I, that is God, the sovereign Lord, is saying to your womb that he is going to put breath into you and you will be back to life. I will try to match this. Tell your womb that the living God is telling him, telling the womb that he is going to breathe. He's going to pour fresh breath in your womb and it will become fertile. It will become uh, fruitful. It will conceive a baby. So this is what God told Ezekiel. This is what God is telling you. Whenever you see somebody being represented in the word of God, God is directly speaking to us. So now when God said this to Ezekiel, 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 I will bring back life to you. I will give you sinews and muscles and cover you with skin. Then God is going to give a new strength to your womb. Because for you not to get pregnant, for you not to be able to conceive, which means there are hindrances. There, anytime, I keep on telling women this, anytime you have not entered monopause and you are trying to conceive and you, you aren't able to conceive, there must be something that is stopping you, either physical or spiritual. So now, when God says, I'm going to put, I'm going to cover you with skin, which means I'm going to put new things in your womb. I'm going to remove. That's why I say you shouldn't ask how God will make you to be pregnant, despite the fact they have told you, you have this, you have that. So, which means God is going to remove all those Jamgadiantis that is in your womb and place new ones, which means you will now become a fresh person and you become fertile. 
to conceive. So he said, I will give you, I will cover you with skins. I will put breath into you and bring you back to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. When God removes all those nonsense that is blocking you from becoming pregnant, he will put new things and you will be pregnant and then you will be surprised. So when God told Ezekiel this, Ezekiel repeated what God said he should do. Just like I ask you to place your hands in your womb. Now, after Ezekiel have said this, chapter 7 says so i prophesied as i had been told he did exactly what god asked him to do he did not ask why should i do that like some people when you ask them to place their hands on their womb they will be asking you why would we place our hands why must we do fasting why must we pray so ezekiel did not ask all those unnecessary questions he followed the instructions of god so he says, so I prophesied as I had been told while I was speaking, just as we are praying now. Do you know that some people, <laughs> do you know some, that some people have received their instant healing? Do you know that some people have become pregnant already? Just like, uh, like people who have ovulated this month or who will still ovulate, they have received their instant uh, pregnancy, but they don't know just waiting for time to clarify it so as um, um ezekiel was still speaking he heard a rattling noise he heard a rattling noise and the bones begin to join together just like your womb most of you that are here with their sincere heart most of you that are uh, that are here with their genuine heart without doubting spirit without uh, looking whether Tochi is a pastor or not, without uh, checking if Tochi is, uh, is a prophetess. I, am, I have told you guys several times that I'm not a pastor, I'm not a prophetess. I am a human being just like you, but I am a believer of God. I have, I have, this is not exaggerating, this is not pomposity, this is not overstatement. I have experienced God blessings. I have encountered God. If I have not, if God have not answered my prayer, I will not come here to deceive myself and you guys. God has showed me several favors. God has delivered me in the most, um, I don't know the situation I will use to compare it. When I thought all hope was lost, I went to God he healed me, he answered me, he delivered me, he gave me what I want. And that is why I am here to share this experience with you. So don't mind if you know me, you'll be saying, huh, she's reading Bible like pastor, she's praying like pastor, who made her a pastor? Is she a prophetess? Is this this? Don't look at, God can use anybody to work for him. Look at, um, what is the name of this man, Saul? Before Saul turned to a Christian, before he became poor, what was he doing? Was he not killing, slaughtering Christians? When God wanted to choose him, God chose him. God can choose a criminal. God can choose a harlot. God can choose, you know, we know how to condemn people, somebody that you have condemned. And that is why some people are being deceived. Some people, some people, some people will go to hellfire, not because they merited hellfire, not because they, they, they committed sin, but because of their judgment towards others. They will go to heaven. When they reach heaven, they see somebody that they have condemned here on earth. When they reach there, they say, ha, if this person is here, which means this place is a hellfire, they will use themselves, they will use their hands and send themselves to hellfire. So do not judge anybody Rather, do the needful. So when Ezekiel was prophesying, the bones started rattling. He heard a rattling noise and the bones began to join together. While Ezekiel said, now while I was, the bones were covered with sniffs and muscles and then with skin. But there, were, there was no 
breathe in the bones. So he saw the bones, they joined together, but they weren't uh, breathing. So God said to me, Mother man, prophesy to the wind. Tell the wind that the sovereign Lord command it into these into the sovereign Lord command it to come from every direction to breathe into these dead bodies and to bring them back to life. Tell your womb that the word of God said that it must carry a baby this month and watch God in action. So I prophesied as I had been told, breathe entered the bodies and they came to life and stood up. There were enough of them to form an army. So we'll stop here. At least you guys have seen with the scripture we read that God is the God of impossibility. If God can make a dry bone to speak, if God can make a dry bone to come back to life, I don't know what, what your fertility, fertility, children is just like a gift. You know what a gift is? It's very easy for you to give somebody a gift, right? You can just, maybe somebody can do something to you, something good, or maybe you like somebody, you can send a gift to the person, and um, and I also want to use this opportunity. Yes, I cannot keep quiet. I cannot keep on hiding it. I know maybe she will not like it, but I want to give shout out to my sister, um, Sarah. All of you are watching me, Sarah. I don't know if you will like it, but I don't need to hide it anymore. Um, I'm the kind of person that when somebody do something for me, I appreciate. Please, I want you guys to help me to appreciate. My sister Sarah, I have received a lot of gifts, gifts that helped me a lot from Sarah. I didn't ask, she just sent it to me. Sarah, I appreciate you. And for this, your kind deed heart, God is going to bless you. Anything that you are looking for, the, the issue of child, God has settled it already. But any other extra thing, as you have the heart of giving, Sending me gifts without me asking you, especially the things that I need. At the time I posted a picture of a snare, I love snare. All of you saw it, you ignore it. But Sarah sent worthless gift, gift that I cannot even start mentioning now. I'll be keeping quiet, but Sarah, as we are praying, God will send you unexpected gift, unimaginable gift. Something that you don't even expect, God will send it to you. And I give you a shout out. I appreciate you. May God Almighty bless you. So before we pray, let's study this um, this Bible. I like us to be praying with this Bible. Isaiah 54 verse 1. Isaiah 51 verse 1. Please, if you are here, I want you to... Please, nobody should choose me. I am not among those that are looking for the fruit of womb. You choose people who, are, who, who want to get pregnant. You choose them. I pray for everybody generally. So you choose somebody who is in the same pain with you, who will cry to God. You know, when you are praying, when you know your predicament, you'll be shedding tears on behalf of the person. But if you choose me that is not trying to conceive, I may not be so serious like you. I don't know if you people understand me. I pray for everybody generally, but choose people who are in the same situation with you. When they are crying to God, they know. They know um, your situation. So I think it works faster like that. So let's read this chapter. We'll pray. My time is up. I want to go for school on. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 1. Now, there it writes, you see Jerusalem, yesterday I was using blessing, blessing. So blessing case is closed. Blessing will be among those that will testify. Now I'm going to use Sarah. I know some people will say, um, I don't have a favorite person. I love all of you the same way. But when somebody do something good, you need to appreciate. Yes, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not an ungrateful human being. I'm not ungrateful. 
when you do something i appreciate you i appreciate sarah I will keep on giving her shout out because she have um the heart of good you you have it takes um some people will have money some people may be rich but they may not have the heart of giving anybody that have the heart of giving the person have a heart of good and you watch those people they hardly fall into troubles god always protect them so i will use sarah this time around so that place they wrote jerusalem if you are with your bible i don't know if you people are with your bible so that place they wrote jerusalem you remove your name now you will be the jerusalem i put sarah you have been like a childless woman like the condition you are it seems you are childless but god but now you can sing and shout for joy i read it yesterday we will keep, keep on reading it god says you will sing and you will shout for joy now you will have more children did he say you will have a child though maybe you are here asking for a child but god is telling you that you are going to have more children like a woman whose husband never left her so we'll stop here today tomorrow we'll continue and um, i urge you whenever you are praying always try to pray with um, these chapters especially ezekiel this last chapter that i read study 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 about faith if you do not have faith ask god to give you that faith god, god should remove the spirit of doubt because the enemy will be attacking you after this prayer the enemy will be attacking you will be coming to you telling you are you sure you you, you will be pregnant uh, and you will notice now the enemy will be pushing um, the signs of uh, 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 your period making you to doubt our prayer but please in all this your ability to stand firm your ability to have faith your ability to trust that is what is going to save you so heavenly father we thank you we we'll glorify your name we worship you for opportunity like this we thank you for another day and another strength that you have given to us to come together as families as sisters and brothers to engage in this um, agreement prayer which we are crying to you to wipe away tears of women who have been trying to conceive to wipe away the spirit of infertility king of glory many homes are about to to be destroyed many have been destroyed already because of inability of uh, conceiving or producing a child but god when you created adam and eve you gave them the power to go into the world and multiply you said that there shall not be barren among your people you said that your wife shall be like a, a fruitful vineyard but today a lot of women are in a, in able to conceive lord we do not know why but we are here today this week in your presence to pray to beg in one accord lord for you to bless every family even those that are watching here those that do that are not here those that do not have money to buy the internet the poorest of the poor please that wants this blessing but there is nothing like one having their own children no matter how you take other people's children to be they will never be yours there is nothing like one's own child father they are here asking for their own child lord i beg you to open every womb of a woman that is participating in this program father i don't want to know how you are going to do it one thing i know is that you you are the god of impossibility i have tested you and i have trusted you you will do it father this year remaining just one month before this year runs out father let women testify let them testify please lord any of the sins that will cause hindrance to the answering of this prayer 
we ask for your mercy. We say, may you have mercy. Forgive, O oh Lord, and open our womb, open their womb, so that they will conceive. Make now for yourself. Come and glorify yourself. Just like you commanded Ezekiel to speak to the dry bone, Father, I am speaking to their womb right now. Any hindrances, anything that is preventing them from becoming pregnant, Lord, please remove it. Put new breath into their womb so that their womb will be fertile again. Father, we'll come against principalities and powers. Any monitoring spirit, any man, any woman from their father's house, from their mother's house, from the compound that they are living and the one they have lived before, any spirit of the dead, any spirit of the COVID, any marine spirit, any monitoring objects that the enemies are using, Lord, especially those who have this problem of um, unexplained infertility, where a woman is okay, but she is not able to conceive. Lord, in this situation, you are the only one that can solve it. We'll beg you, we'll cry to you in one accord as we join faith together as one family to come up, come, call upon you. Please, Lord, answer and wipe away tears and bring joy. In the book of Ezekiel, in the book of Isaiah 54, you say that they should sing and shout for joy, that they will have more children. Father, as many children as they desire, please bless them and your name will be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. So I thank you all for today. Tomorrow we are going to continue. If you haven't shared this program, if you haven't liked and shared, you, you, you have failed. You failed one and any, any result or consequences, you will bear it alone. The rule is that you must be genuine. Immediately you enter, share. If you forget to share when you enter, as you are leaving, share, like, follow the page if you like it. If you don't like the page, please don't follow. If you follow the page, you put on your notification so that anytime I post or come live, you will join to learn. So remain blessed. We are going to meet ourselves again tomorrow. We will continue this. I pray God give me the strength to continue this program, but I know he will do it because I took his permission before I organized this program. God will give me the strength and will finish it the remaining two days. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and it will start raining again very soon. Next year, January, starting from January, we are going to be plastering, plastering, plastering the baby's picture, plastering. <laughs> In fact, uh, somebody will ask, if this uh, page is for baby production <laughs> page. So don't worry, God will do it for you. Do not cry, do not worry, do not overstress yourself. As you are doing this prayer, please avoid stress. Avoid stress so that you can ovulate. Avoid stress, relax, meditate. Whenever that devil comes, carry your Bible. If you can't carry Bible, do meditation. How do you do meditation? You can place a Cool music, put it in your ear, your put your earpiece, relax and listen to it. If you cannot do that, you can go for a walk, maybe 30 minutes walk. You can do yoga exercise to relax yourself at night. Sleep. Don't count ceilings. Don't count ceilings. Because if you are counting ceilings, you are disturbing your, your your brain and ovulation will not happen. At the end of the day, you will not blame God. You will not blame anybody. In this aspect, you have your own role to play, and God will do the remaining one. I love you all, and I say we will see you tomorrow. I pray for all of you generally. So be honest when you are praying for the person. Don't go and pray for yourself first. Some people are selfish. They will now come, God, God bless me. God bless me. God bless my womb. God bless after. They are finished praying for themselves now. They will not come and remember that they choose somebody. You are deceiving yourself. You are not honest. Don't even mention your name when you are praying. Just be mentioning the name of the person. Study the name. Let the name enter your mouth. Praying for the person who will see you again. Bye-bye all. Oh.